If you or one of your loved ones have suffered from a stroke and you're looking for other alternatives because you're frustrated with the results you've gotten from a recovery standpoint so far, is hyperbaric appropriate for you and should you consider that as part of your recovery process? That is what we're gonna cover in today's video. In our experience in our clinic, some of the conditions that respond the fastest are neurologic conditions, including things like concussion, TBI, and post-stroke. It is my opinion that post-stroke care should actually begin with hyperbaric oxygen. In most cases, especially with an ischemic stroke, in an ischemic stroke, literally the cause of the problem is blocked blood flow leading to hypoxic tissue. In other cases where the stroke might be a bleed, we still need to stabilize the area before doing hyperbaric. However, hyperbaric would still be considered appropriate as it is a result of loss of blood flow to an area leading to hypoxia and ultimately leading to tissue damage. So why is it exactly appropriate to be considering hyperbaric oxygen therapy as part of your post-stroke recovery? Let's cover a few different details. Number one, again, what is the cause of the issue? The cause of the issue is loss of blood flow, leading to loss of oxygen delivery, leading to hypoxic tissue and ultimately tissue damage, and in certain cases, ultimately tissue death. And so when this is our brain or our nervous system, obviously this is a tremendous issue and it comes with many, many different cascades of consequences. Whenever there is a stroke and there's a loss of blood flow and a loss of oxygen, there's going to be an area within the brain that's considered the core, and then another area in the brain that's considered the penumbra. The core is the actual tissue damage or death. And then the penumbra is typically this surrounding area that's considered to be dormant tissue. In all recovery from stroke, whether using hyperbaric oxygen or not, maybe we're just doing standard PT and OT therapies, we're really trying to exercise the different areas of the brain, wake them up, and then regain as much function as we can. As we're trying to regain normal function, what's happening is we're trying to shrink that penumbra, that area of dormancy, down to the smallest amount of space possible. Nobody really knows where the absolute line between where the core is and where the penumbra is. All we really want to do is shrink that penumbra down and regain as much function as possible. Is it likely that some amount of that tissue is actually permanently damaged and will not recover? Of course, that's possible. But as much function as can be regained from that penumbra as possible is really what the goal is. In many cases, patients end up coming to us 12 months, 18 months, two years post-stroke as they've gone through their normal routines of recovery, achieved whatever amount of response it seems like is possible, but are still frustrated, hoping or wanting more recovery in the future but seeing that the standard of care is just not getting them there. The sooner you apply something like hyperbaric to a neurologic condition like post-stroke, the more recovery you should expect. Do we still get pretty good results for patients 12 months out, 18 months out, two years out? Yes. Have we seen post-stroke patients five years, eight years, 10 years post-stroke and still saw some responses? Yes, but absolutely the amount of response is directly related to how quickly we start intervening with oxygen. Delivering oxygen to tissue that was hypoxic will be the main ingredient necessary for waking up that dormant tissue and regaining as much function as possible. So the sooner we get to that, absolutely the better response we're going to have. At some point throughout the therapy, it will also be appropriate to still be doing hyperbaric oxygen delivering that extra oxygen, and then revisiting some of those other PT and OT or exercise-related therapies. Because now that we've oxygenated the area and we're starting to wake it up, we need to revisit some of that fine motor and gross motor skill so that we can decrease spasticity or improve speech or improve motor control. So we wouldn't be doing hyperbaric instead of those other therapies. At one point, we actually wanna be doing hyperbaric therapy in addition to those therapies to really get the most out of both worlds. But as a result of doing hyperbaric oxygen and bringing back the PT and OT therapies, you should actually start to get another round of improvements from a lot of the different types of issues that you're experiencing as a result of the consequences from the stroke. Ultimately, how many sessions will you need to do over what period of time? This is a very difficult question to answer because it depends on so many factors. Where was the stroke? How bad of a stroke was it? How much tissue damage was there? 
How long was it since your stroke that you're now adding the oxygen therapy? All of this would play into what that protocol needs to look like. Just to give some guidelines, I wouldn't even consider doing less than 20 hours. At 20 hours, we're first just waking up some tissue. We're just starting a process of neuroplasticity. We're only first getting angiogenesis, new blood vessel growth and blood vessel healing. So to consider anything less than 20 hours, I think would be unrealistic to expect a response. To get somewhere closer to either 20 to 40 hours would certainly be a place that you should start to, again, get a lot of that angiogenic effect, start getting more stem cell mobilization. We do get central nervous system stem cell increases from hyperbaric oxygen long-term. So in that 20 to 40 hour range, you should start getting stem cells again to start healing and regenerating some of that tissue. In many cases, well beyond 40 hours would be appropriate. Not necessarily all in a row. Just like with many other areas with this therapy, we're going to do blocks of therapy mixed with purposeful breaks. And those breaks allow the body to just continue to heal and regenerate, even though you're not actively using the therapy. So there would be a block of treatment, a period of a break, a block of treatment, a period of a break. We might even say a block of treatment, a period of a break, and during that break, let's do some more PT and OT. Then let's rest from PT and OT, do another block of treatment of oxygen, and then go back to the exercise therapies or the brain rehab. Again, these protocols are very varied based on so many factors, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of what to consider if you're moving forward looking at hyperbaric oxygen as part of your recovery process. And another question that we do get quite a bit is whether it's a TBI or a stroke, but you know, this brain trauma was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Is it too late? Should I not even consider this as a therapy? There is a decent amount of research to support using hyperbaric oxygen for TBI and for post-stroke recovery. That's a definite. And we'll link to some of those studies below. Most of those studies, even when they look at chronic TBI or long-term post-stroke, they're typically looking at a window of three years or less. In our office, we've treated three years out, five years out, eight years out, 10 years out, and we have seen improvements. Again, I would say the improvements diminish as the years go on and on, you know, further away from the initial injury itself. That being said, if I had had a stroke and I was 10 years out or I was 15 years out or I was 20 years out, would I still want to consider hyperbaric therapy as an option? Absolutely. Number one, as long as it's a good fit and you don't have any contraindication, there's really no concern that hyperbaric is going to cause you any problems. In fact, we all know that hyperbaric has many, many other benefits, even outside of things like post-TBI or post-stroke recovery. So therefore, there could be reasons to consider hyperbaric in your life as a protocol regardless. And I would remain hopeful that I'm still capable of healing. In other words, as long as I'm alive, I'm capable of healing. And if I can stimulate the right systems and the right cell signaling cascades, I can promote some amount of healing even that far out. And so until proven otherwise, I would absolutely remain hopeful that I can still see some improvements even that far out from a trauma or an injury like that. That being said, if I've gotten 20 hours under my belt or 40 hours under my belt, I might see certain improvements. But if I'm really seeing no changes whatsoever in the areas that I'm looking for, I also would probably say at that point, you could be more confident that more sessions is not necessarily gonna get you where you wanna go with regard to recovery from that particular issue. In the end, I just hope that this video is helpful for you and or your family member to understand where hyperbaric fits in the process of post-stroke recovery. So thank you so much for your attention and for watching the video and we'll see you next time. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.